Hey there friends, Jeff Fritz here, and I want to talk through making minimal APIs even smaller and, and turning this program file where we've got a bunch of files and, and, and things interacting here. Let's make this even clearer what its intent is and push some of this logic into a place that makes sense for the type of feature we're introducing to our APIs. Quite frankly, when folks are editing the source code for this API, I don't want them to touch this program file if they're not changing the way that the web application starts. Right? There's a rule that's out there that says you shouldn't have to modify a file if you're not changing its behavior. And there's too many behaviors happening here inside of this file. So let's refactor it. Let's introduce some extension methods that make it easier to light up this contacts API and move things around a little bit so that all the features for our contacts API are outside of this file. Let's take a look. I'm going to start by defining a static class down here and I'm going to call it contact API extensions. Now our C sharp extension methods are defined in a static class and allow us to kind of spot weld on to other types methods and things that we want to enable on that object. So let's look at moving this map get into this class so we can eliminate that map get altogether. So I will create a public static method here and it's going to return a web application and I'm going to call this method map contacts API. Now I need to next specify the type that I'm going to put this on and I'm going to put this on that same web application that's defined by the app object way over here that app object right there okay so I want to receive we use the keyword this to indicate what we're receiving a web application and I'll call it app just like it's specified up higher so I can use very similar syntax in fact I'm going to cheat a little bit and just grab that map get and copy it right in right there okay I'll tab it over a little bit so it looks nice and I'll return that app object okay um, let's now come up here and we can say app dot map contacts API and now it's very clear our intention here we're mapping all the features of the contacts API on line 8 okay what that's doing behind the scenes we can drill down into and see it's adding this feature I can now look at moving this out into another file and now this is getting even simpler. But there's another statement here we should probably move around as well. This one here on line three, we should move that. We should move that out as well. Let's do it. Let's move that one out. Because there might be other things that we want to introduce somewhere else as well and manage. So I'm going to take this. This is building on the services object, which is an I service collection. So let's copy that I'm even going to cut it and I'm going to go over to that contacts API extensions let's get rid of some of these extra lines and let's add another entry here public static I service collection and let's call this use contacts API use and map are two of the prefix words that you'll see folks use when they're defining the configuration of their API and then down here the interactions that happen in that HTTP pipeline we're mapping requests we're using resources and that's the naming conventions that you'll see folks use so I need to receive that I service collection and I'll call it services and <clears throat> I'll add right here not builder services add transient but just services and now I can return 
services so that I've got that fluent API if I want. So I can chain these statements together if I've got other APIs I want to configure. So let's go back over to the program file. And now here I will say builder services use contacts API. Now that syntax is very concise and very clear in what we're declaring and how we're interacting with things. We've, we've added the ability for us to hide all that minutia of how we're configuring our APIs behind these two methods here on lines three and eight. Let's run this one more time just to verify that it's still behaving the way that we want it to. And there it is. Now, let's enhance this a little bit. Let's show the effect of this by going and adding an ID to these records. So I'm going to stop this. I'm going to head over to my contact object and let's add an ID. So I'll add an int for ID. I will go back over to contacts JSON and let's add an ID here and let's make the top one number one and we'll make the next one two. I can also go back over to my API extensions here and I can now introduce another uh, interaction if I want. I'll just copy this one so I start with that and I can enhance this and not just have slash contacts. I can also say well, give me an ID. I'm going to capture that and put it into a value somewhere that we're going to use it. And not just it's an ID. That's what this curly brace is. is. This is a route capture, right? We're going to capture this thing. It's an integer. That colon INT says this is constrained to be an integer. And we want to pass that ID along. So I can add that here to my arguments. Let's wrap that around so you can see it. So there it is. I have my ID I'm returning and I'm receiving an injected value for the repository. Now I don't want to just get all the values, but I want to get that specific value. So let's say we want to call something called get by ID and pass in that ID. Now the red underline here, Visual Studio Code is telling us, hey, Fritz, I don't know what get by ID is. You need to tell me what to do with this thing. So let's tell it. So I'm going to control dot on that. And it gives me this option, generate method. All right, we'll do that. And I can press F12 to jump right to that method way down here. So let's return that contact by ID. So I'm going to just copy down this serializer and I'm going to say first or default and I'm going to just simply say where that contact ID equals the ID that was passed in. And it's not an object we're returning. We're going to be returning a contact. And yes, it, it could be null, right? I'm going to put a question mark there to say, yes, this could be a null object that we're returning. In fact, I'm going to put a question mark there also so that it knows this whole thing could be null if for some reason that JSON file doesn't exist. I'll go back over to my API extensions. So I said get by ID that and I'm returning it. The results are okay, but they not, might not be okay. We can return and handle that differently. So let's grab this here and I'm going to introduce a local for that. So it's going to give me a contact called value here and it'll return that value. But if value is null, right? So I can say if value is null, right? Um, then return results not found. Otherwise, it's going to return that value. Let's give this a shot. We'll start it up. There it is, compiled, it's running. I'll go back over here, refresh, and I now get my new contacts with their IDs in place.
but if I go in query for slash contact slash one, I get just Fritz in Philadelphia. And of course, if I change that to two, there's Crystal in Dallas. If I key in three, nothing comes back. In fact, if we take a look at our developer console here, and we look at the network, reload it, you'll see we get a 404 there. We get a not found. The server is properly telling us this object doesn't exist. Great. Behaved just the way I want. And if we look back at our code, everything is neat and tidy in my program. Didn't have to touch that to introduce the new feature. And my extensions file over here has these two methods set up for us that properly move the interaction, change where I'm configuring my API into somewhere that's specific for this, that I can grow and change without touching the way that the rest of my web server works. I'm clearly only working with the contacts API in my map contacts API method. All right, that's just the next step in our puzzle working with APIs here. I hope you join me next time where we introduce open API to the mix here and show you how you can generate some swagger documentation and make it a little bit easier for folks to use open API to work with your .NET 6 minimal APIs.